Welcome to the show. Thank you for being here, Lynn. I appreciate it. What, a, what an introduction. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I paid him to say that. <laughs> she did, yeah. Did you see it right out of the I, yeah, I, I saw you all over there. I didn't know what was going on. Okay, okay. Uh, well, again, thank you for coming on the show. And I, I want to begin with a little bit of, of John talking about the OG, uh, you know, one of the original folks to, to go kind of head first into pickleball. Mm-hmm. Um, what was the impetus behind that? Why was that something you thought was important for yourself and eventually making kind of a little bit of career out of it too? Uh, gosh, I can go back a little here, but um, I started coaching pickleball when I was working at another gym uh, here in Richmond at Short Pump. And a uh, pandemic came along, governor said shut down all the courts. And so it wasn't really possible to coach there but in the meantime of the group that I had been coaching through about six or seven years they had been playing at Pouncey Track Mm. Park in Henrico and I would go there um, during the pandemic and they were like oh that's my coach that's the person who taught me to play and then before I knew what I had 30 lessons outside at the courts it was like just took off like two weeks and so um I have a great team of people around me, as in family, (laughs) and younger son said, Mom, I'll build you a website. He's uh, got a degree in computer science from VCU. I said, okay, that sounds good. And so we sat down, and that was very informative for me to figure out how we collaborate and do this together. Long story short, I got overwhelmed um, pretty soon after that. When did I start that uh, 2022 round about March and before I knew what a year had passed I'd coached for nine months and when I looked back I'd done over a thousand paid lessons wow to that I mean I taught a thousand lessons but Mm. you know when you do six people in one lesson or you do two or three or one but right it was working out to about 25 lessons a week so you you can do up to or you'll sometimes do more than one person in a lesson is that what you're saying too like you'll have a group well, of people that you help? well in actual fact i find that's almost the best way to learn to play pickleball because it is a um, activity that we teach as a doubles game primarily mm-hmm. and so as soon as you put six or eight people together they're immediately starting to get to know each other and then they start with want to know where they play and how long what made you do this and um you know then the next thing they're best friends and then if you can keep them connected by referring them to a group where they can play in a round robin format or in a meetup group or a text group you want to get them connected to other people so they'll keep playing and meet other people and then have fun I mean, why else are we doing this? Fun, <laughs> <right>? <laughs> Absolutely. At the core, that's what we should be doing, yes. All right, Lynn, I hate to have to do this because uh, I know you get it a lot, but obviously there's the accent, and there's a lot <laughs> of confusion as to where the accent actually has its origin. It's South African. Um, but what I love about Lynn is she is like me. She has a biting sense of humor, particularly on the pickleball court, but she has the advantage <laughs> of whenever she says, like, John, that shot made you look idiotic. I think it's a compliment, and I say <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that's a unique trait that's yeah. for sure uh, yeah i try to keep it on the milder side but <laughs> somehow i get away with stuff i believe that's what you guys tell me that i shouldn't usually get away with <laughs> yeah i love that um you know like you said it's over a thousand lessons paid lessons on the front end of what now is the pickleball craze you know it's everywhere oh. it's the most popular thing um we've got a live feature coming in unbelievably on monday morning cbs news uh here at performance pickleball uh, just to illustrate the point of how popular it's gotten what have you seen in terms of the demand uh from beginners you know i can't imagine it's decreased at all uh from that original period where you did that many lessons um yeah so um with regards to By far the biggest uh, group of people, the niche market that I'm in is beginners. Um, Primarily people between the ages of approximately 40 and 75. That's my core group. I have coached as young as eight years old and I've coached as old as 86. That's been the range. Uh, My favorites are those that have had their uh, knee replacements. I had one lady who said, um, 
when I was in hospital, they want to know what I would do after I had my knee replacement. And she said, please write, I'm going to learn to play pickleball. And I did. I taught her to play pickleball. And she now plays with her twin sons early in the morning at um, at Pouncey Track Park. Oh and I see her there when I'm arriving at 6.30 in the morning for some people who want lessons that early. All right, so i got to get to the meat of uh, Lynn's visit today. Not that we're not always thrilled to have her here at Performance, which she's dubbed her new happy place, which mm -hmm. makes me happy Ooh. because that's what we want uh, it to be for people. But uh, Lynn and I and Tyann and the rest of uh, our instructional program have a big announcement. We are about to, or we're announcing now, and we're about to roll out what we're calling Zero Zero Start, which is a two-week, six lessons with Lynn uh, on our courts program uh, for beginners. Um, that will start very soon, February 27th, um, and include a lot of different elements. And I wanted to give you the floor, Lynn, to explain, you know, where that begins, where it ultimately ends, what you've seen in terms of the friendships and connections it has created within those groups, because to your point, Joe, it is not individual lessons. It's going to be groups of, of eight uh, going through that program, and, it, and it's really the, the tip of the spear, so to speak, for what we hope in terms of growing the game right here. Um, so the idea is that we would teach six lessons in two weeks, um, three in the one week and three in the next week, and um, have a round robin that they can enjoy and practice the skills that they've just learned. Um, it'll be a structured program working through all the basic fundamentals of what you need to do to be able to get on a court in a public facility to have the confidence to know that you can be a support, supportive par partner for someone else um, and that you know the rules. <coughs> uh, so many times I'm hearing people who are coming into lessons say, oh, well, they were playing at this uh, park or something or the other, and this person kept stepping into the kitchen and they didn't really understand that that was one of the rules and they want to know, well, how do I deal with that, you know? Mm. Um, so there's sometimes gaps in the knowledge about what people have in terms of the rules and also etiquette. What's common practice um, at different clubs or and mostly within the pickable community. Um, the idea is that you'll have a good time, you'll make new friends, uh, that you'll be a little bit silly, <laughs> uh, that you'll laugh at my jokes. That's one of the requirements that you bring your sense <laughs> of humor onto the court. Joe's in. Yeah. I'm in. I've already <laughs> passed the test. That wasn't even a joke. <laughs> that's, that's it's infectious. <laughs> it's actually one of the messages, uh, my, my first message that I send to people when they sign up, uh, what we will provide for them, but they have to bring the sense of humor. Mm. And that gets us off to a good start. Um, go through a little bit. Uh, I like to send notes after each lesson um, where I can. I include videos um, that I think support the information that we've just learnt about um, and also uh, just help to support the work that's already gone on on the court the day before and then every lesson has a quick review of what we've done before we learn a new skill and then we always try to implement that skill in that lesson for a, a little while hardest thing to do learn how to score <laughs> that is what people struggle with the most so I try to attack that in the first lesson, we already start that. And we're starting to play a mini game already. Um, the idea is to impart the right amount of knowledge for people that are learning without overwhelming them with too much talk, making sure that they get to hit a lot of balls and practice some of the stuff that they're doing. And then give me feedback. I don't understand this or why, uh, what am I doing wrong here? You know, um, and then when we've got a solid foundation it's like a house you want to build from that and then when they've got that foundation then they can go to the next level will it, whether it be another um, series that we run uh, with me or other coaches and then they go to an intermediate level after they've played for a while the jump from one to two is not such a big jump but two to three level which is our more intermediate level going to three oh three five there's a big jump there and you don't just go and take a course and then you can do that. Mm -hmm. You actually have to execute and practice the stuff that you've learned in the first two. 
And then after that, it's up to you guys. You can teach the people that are the five O's. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't up to me. Uh, yeah. no, 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 I no. can teach them how to drink a double. <laughs> 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 well, I can't teach them how to play doubles. You can do I that all, all afterwards. <laughs> um, so I always say to people, you know, it's not bad to be mediocre. And to play a mediocre game is just fine. And it's also fine to win ugly. I don't care what you do. Get that ball over the net. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I also say you don't want to get too good. By the time you get into four, five, and five overs, not so many people to play with. <laughs> ah, that's yeah. actually a good you point. You want yeah. to stay in that three, five, that's four, why I've range. That's plateaued. I told yeah, you, Joe. You that's why I never play. I yeah. never train. Yeah. I'm just hovering that's somewhere there between three, five, you and just like need four, one. Yeah, because you need more people to play with. And yeah. you, you never want to be a professional either. You have to travel all over the place, live out of a suitcase. Yeah. Who wants to I don't want to do, do all that. I do want to say I'm a professional, but it's never going to happen at this point. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, you know, serious question, though. Like, So I don't even know if you know this in, in my origin. Um and how we became, Renee and I came with, through the Ladybug Society to host our first event down at CTC. I was just Googling um, pickleball parks in the area to see if you could rent one, you know, for the course of the weekend. And uh, I called Ronnie, uh, or wound up calling Ronnie at Chesterfield County, uh, and she said, you need to talk to Linda Scott. And, <laughs> you know, rang Linda's actual house, and she had she didn't know me from Adam and picked up the phone, and I said, I have no idea what I'm doing, uh, but we are going to do a pickleball tournament and i met her in the parking lot at ctc um and she said do you have any idea how to run a pickleball tournament and she said it very sweetly because linda is a very sweet person yep, uh, and i said no i absolutely do not but we hired someone who does um, which eventually became tyenne but um Anyway, long way around to saying, uh, you know, through this, it's been so fun to get to know you and her and, and you know, some of some of the people, like say, we call the OGs, uh, but I say that with uh, the utmost fondness for you all. Um, you know, just where pickleball has come already in Richmond, where you see it going, um, and, you know, did you, think, did you think, could you ever have imagined there'd be this level of interest to the point of a facility like this uh, on this short a time frame? I have to tell you, it's absolutely astounding. <laughs> um there's another coach who's out there, Cindy Welch. Before the pandemic, a group of us, about 12 of us, were the sort of elite players that were playing at that stage. We would go out to Hanover, Parks and Recs, and someone would bring us all together. We had people from Northern Virginia, Fredericksburg, Louisa. I'd drive, drive an hour to go and play because this was good competition, mm. right? Mm -hmm. And I just said to Cindy the other day, yesterday's heroes we are not those top elite players anymore because this game has just taken off and everybody else um, has come into the game now, whether you're, uh, I see middle schoolers playing tournaments now um, and it's an amazing thing. And then I see, you know, the older generation are playing uh, tournaments with each other, playing less tournaments, maybe playing some leagues. But I see this wonderful cross-section going from kids all the way through. So there's a huge range of people who are able to play the sport because of the type of sport that it is. Um, the way this has grown has been phenomenal. And I just think that this place and what's going to give to not just our local community, but we're setting a precedent for the state of Virginia, not only state of Virginia, but many other places throughout uh, the US and maybe the rest of the world. Um, you know, I'm showing this to people in South Africa where I was just visiting in October and I'm telling them about this facility and they're like, wow, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. We thank you for finding in us um, the validity uh, in our motives for what we were doing. Obviously, at the end of the day, we need to make money, or at the very least, break even. <laughs> but uh, you know, it wasn't always that wasn't driven that way. It's, it started with Lee uh, just fanatically becoming a pickleballer uh, after being so big into the tennis scene for so long, like it did for you. Thank you so much for having me. I have to say, there's always firsts in your life, and this is my first, but I've thoroughly well, enjoyed no it. No one would have known that. We yeah, should, uh, you crushed it. You did a yeah. fantastic. Fantastic job. And Definitely. If you hadn't, we would have been like, wow, she sounds very <laughs> regal. <laughs> <laughs> I think you'll be a repeat guest. I think we'll, I think we'll yeah, have you back absolutely. for sure. Sounds yeah. good. I don't know if I any, have anything more to tell you that's of great value, but anyway. <laughs> we, we ran out of things of great value to say after episode two, and here we are. <laughs> Still going. <laughs> very good. Thanks, Lynn. Thank so. you very much.